sisters and brothers of America. my heart with joy unspeakable to rise in response to the warm and cordial welcome which you have given us. I thank you in the name of the most ancient order of monks in the world. I thank you in the name of the mother of religions. And I thank you in the name of the millions and millions of Hindu people of all classes and sects. After Shyama Krishna <clears throat> left the body, uh, Swami Vivekananda, he lived as a wandering monk for a long time. We went all over, up and down from the farthest north to the south of India. And so it's said that he swam out to the uh, rock, what's now known as Vivekananda Rock, down at Kanyakumari. And while there, he uh, went into deep meditation and he had a vision of Shyama Krishna, beckoning him to come over the ocean, across the water. And at that point, he realized that uh, he was meant to, to attend this Parliament of Religions in Chicago. At that time, uh, Chicago was primarily a young and very vibrant city. And one of the unique things about Chicago um, are its leading families. And it was these leaders who um, wanted to you know, put Chicago on the international map. Now they had back in, I think it was 1867, they had the Chicago fire, which burnt most of Chicago down. And so it was like coming out of the ashes. But there was a tremendous spirit of dynamism, of, of energy, of youth, you know, of, in Chicago. And that was uh, true, I think, of American general, that we were a young nation and a very kind of the youthful energy. India. Bharat, a country where in the past, in world history, the most sophisticated philosophies is to come from that country. There's one particular group known as the Transcendentalist up in New England. Uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson, Henry David Thoreau, Bronson Alcott, they, they were familiar with some of the Hindu teachings, but basically nobody had ever come from India and spoke on Hinduism. Of course, many people were invited from India. They were representatives of many different faiths, but in fact, there was no invitation to someone to represent Hinduism. It's almost like an accident of history that he actually did come here. He traveled from uh, Bombay to Vancouver by ship. From Vancouver, BC, he took a train to Chicago. It was in India that many um, uh, Maharajas, when they met Swami Vivekananda while he was traversing the length and breadth of the country, and uh, he, he was so articulate that many of these Maharajas collectively felt that it would be great if he was to go as a representative for Hinduism. India is living sort of example where most sort of important 
world religions live together. Beside, uh, beside homegrown religions, then Jainism, Buddhism, Zorazodian, uh, very, very ancient world religion from outside, then Christianity, Islam, these come from outside of India, but all these major world religious traditions live together in this country. My thanks also to some of the speakers on the platform who, referring to the delegates from the Orient, have told you that these men from far off nations may well claim to honor of bearing to different lands the idea of toleration. I am proud to belong to a religion which has taught the world both tolerance and universal acceptance. We believe not only in universal toleration, but we accept all religions as true. I am proud to belong to a nation which has sheltered the persecuted and the refugees of all religions and all nations of the earth. I am proud to tell you that we have gathered in our bosom the purest remnant of the Israelist who came to southern India and took refuge with us in the very year in which their holy temple was shattered to pieces by Roman time. Now in 1893, we had, as you know, we had the Columbian Exposition. And it also um, revealed uh, the latest discoveries in science and technology that uh, Edison was just, you know, his inventions were just coming out. Uh, Tesla was there, he had in, uh, invented or discovered alternating current. Charles Bonney was the one who came up with the idea. He said that as we showcase our kind of material achievements, it's important to uh, showcase our uh, intellectual and social and cultural achievements as well. And so they organized a series of actually of 12 different congresses. And one of these was the Parliament of Religions. He has to undergo a lot of hardships. He didn't realize he needed an official invitation or anything uh, to uh, participate in the Parliament. But in Boston, he met a professor. Professor Wright. He was a professor of philosophy in the university. When Swami Vivekananda asked for credentials, and he said, Swamiji, it is very funny to ask credentials for, from you. It's like asking credentials from the sun regarding its right to shine. He had a very powerful personality. He had these glowing eyes, and he was full of passion. And uh, he always wore the, the Swami's uh, robes. And he spoke very well. He spoke very good English. Then he came by train to Chicago. At that time, the introduction he got from Boston, it was lost. And uh, it was September, and it was very cold here. So at that time, it is said that uh, he spent the night in the railway compartment or in the packing box. In the morning, he was totally exhausted, dejected, tired. But at that time, uh, he uh, was kind of wandering around. He actually was, was trying to beg his food from door to door, like sannyasins do in India, and people were just you know, chasing him away, being very rude. Eventually, he ended up here somewhere on, on these steps. Then, because he was hungry and the exhaustion, he fell down. Right across after a while, uh, there was a house here where the Hales lived. 
and Mrs. Hale, through the window, saw this person sitting on the, on the stairs and something overcame her. So one of his sisters came out, running, sprinkled water and took this family inside, showed all hospitality. And then she took Swami Vivekananda to Parliament Regents. I am proud to belong to the religion which has sheltered and is still fostering the remnant of the grand Jorastrian nation. This was not just words, it was had his whole spiritual sadhana, everything behind it. It was there that he made his powerful advent. Hinduism at that time was only known for the practices that the colonial government was trying to eradicate in India. It was not known what is Hinduism, what are its tenets, what are its beliefs, what are its texts. What he was trying to do there was to say what the Rig Veda said thousands of years ago, Ekam Sat Vipraha Bahuda Vadanti. The truth is one, the wise call it by many names. The concept of multiple paths to the divine is built into the Vedanta. By comparing its beliefs and practices to other faiths that were better known at that time, that was what made Swamiji stand out. And so it really, that speech opened a door between East and West. He often, he visited uh, the World's Fair, so he saw all these wonderful things of, of modern technology and science. He said that uh, India had a beautiful jewel, but it was lying in the mud. He says, whereas America, they've got a beautiful case, but there's nothing inside. He wanted to combine the two, to take the spiritual uh, knowledge of India with the uh, technological process, a human betterment that he saw in the West. different streams having their sources in different places all mingle their water in the sea so O oh Lord the different paths which men take through different tendencies various though they appear crooked so straight all lead to thee that there is an underlying spiritual unity uh, for all uh, diversity and for all of humankind. It was the ground for which he spoke to the West and said that this ground also needs to be understood and that the material achievements, the prosperity and the efficiency and the science and things from the West also were parts of that spiritual uh, unity. There were many reactions to Swamiji's speeches. Some people left the hall because they couldn't take his message. They, it was outrageous to say that we are God. It was blasphemy. Well, the reaction was from the people of Chicago. You know, when we think about the thunderous applause for two minutes. And in fact, he became the toast of Chicago. In the newspaper reports, they would say that, why do we send missionaries to India? They don't know, they don't need to be preached. They have these wonderful teachers. Whenever there would be a slow uh, session, uh, the uh, organizers would announce Swamiji is coming to speak and all the crowds would move from this auditorium to the other one um, in order to hear him speak. His audiences were always very large and that continued outside 
you know, in the salons of Chicago as well. And the way that he spoke to people was a universal modern message that was not intermediated by language or the cultural bondage. And he also gave an affirming message to the West was that India had much to learn from Western culture. So in his analysis of the civilizational differences between East and West, he had an affirming role for the West as well as for the East. He spoke here uh, shortly after, for two Sundays in October after the Parliament ended. He would have stood where I'm standing right now, behind a, an older version of a pulpit, but literally I'm standing in his footsteps. The house was packed for two consecutive Sundays, overflowed crowd. The interesting thing, I think, is that from uh, the Swami's appearances, there was a great interest in world religions. Indeed, that was one of the marks of the congregation throughout the 20th century. This is the place where Swamiji used to take frequent walks. As you can see, it's a very serene environment here. And in this park, Swamiji used to babysit this little girl, five, six years old maybe, Agnes Ewing. And that uh, little girl, so she later on uh, became a disciple of Swami Akhilananda of Boston. So it just shows how the spiritual influence uh, bore fruit you know, down, down the years. It's likely that this is the place, a uh, shore of Lake Michigan, where he, where it's recorded that he it reached Samadhi in one of his experiences. Then I call it Brahman. Jokhun Srishti Sthiti Proloy Koren, Tokhun Shukti Bole Koi, Kali Bole Koi. So when, if he is involved in Srishti Sthiti Proloy, creation, preservation and restriction, then I call it Kali or Shakti. To me, Jake Brahma Bolcho, to who you are calling Brahma, Take Kali Bolchi. I am calling Dr. Kali only. When he was alive and speaking, he was meeting with the movers and shapers, you know, very wealthy people, philosophers, psychologists. He was at the epitome of, of the Western civilization at that time. And he was able to engage the community leaders. And that was one of the reasons why his impact was so great. So the Western followers uh, who he was impacting were really leading the society at that time. One of the great contributions Swamiji made during the World Parliament, but also in his subsequent travels um, and talks at various universities, um, not just in America, but also in Europe, put the religion of Hinduism um, on a higher academic platform to the extent that he got offered chairs um, uh, in religious studies in different universities. There are now so many Indians in so many of the places where the Vedanta centers are thriving that the primary audience uh, is the Indians who are now living around the Vedanta centers. And that means that the community is, is very deep into the, the Vivekananda and Ramakrishna uh, you know, teachings and understandings, but it also has a more Hindu environment.
fact, in Vedanta there is no um, exclusivity. We don't believe that we are the sole possessors of the truth. And we believe that even an atheist is fine. If you are a Christian, Swamiji wants you to remain a Christian. If you are a Hindu, fine. If you are a Muslim, a Jewish person, is fine. Just try to give more depth to religion, bring it into your life. Seeing God is something that will happen when the conditions are given. To lay too much, too much stress on seeing God is like bothering about the result. We, we worry about the job to be done and the result will come. The way to realize the truth is through jnana, is through knowledge. By pursuing the path of knowledge, one can definitely realize the truth. The Vedanta was the philosophical essence of Hinduism, which was universal in its appeal. The late Swamiji, 100 years ago, he already, you see, seeing these things. Secretarianism, bigotry, and its horrible descendant, fanaticism, they have filled the earth with violence, drenched it often and often with human blood, destroyed civilization, and sent whole nation to despair. Had it not been for these horrible demons, human society would be far more advanced than it is now. But their time is come, and I fervently hope that the bell that tolled this morning in honor of this convention may be the death knell of all fanaticism, of all persecutions, with the sword or with the pen, and of all uncharitable feelings between persons wending their way to the same goal. I feel simply I am one of his followers. Oh. Uh -huh.